we just built a feature that converts speech to text. Now, let's flip it around and do the opposite. Convert text to speech, or TTS for short. The AI SDK supports speech generation, just like everything else we worked with. We will use OpenAI's text-to-speech model, which produces great natural-sounding voices. We will follow a familiar pattern. First, create a route handler that converts text to audio using AI SDK. Second, build a UI where users can type text and hear it spoken. Back in VS Code, start by creating the API route. In the API folder, create a new folder called Generate Speech, and inside, create a route.ts file. Begin with the post handler that accepts a request parameter. So export, async function, post, request of type request, curly braces. Next, let's add the imports we need. Import, OpenAI, from AI SDK slash OpenAI, and the generate speech function from the core AI package. This is experimental, so experimental, generate speech as generate speech. It is marked as experimental, but don't worry, it works perfectly fine. Now for this endpoint, we will receive text that needs to be converted to speech. So extract the text from the request body. Await request.json. Nice and simple. Now let's generate the speech. We use the generate speech function with OpenAI's text to speech model. So property model, we set it to openai.speech and specify TTS-1. We then pass in the text we want to convert to speech. So text, key and value being the same. The function returns an audio object, await generate speech, and from the result, destructure the audio object. Send this audio back to the client. Return new response, audio.uint8 array, and then we set headers, content type, audio.media type, or the string audio slash mpeg. We set the content type header to tell the browser this is audio data, and the audio object includes the media type, but we fall back to audio slash mpeg just in case. Let's wrap everything in error handling. Try block, catch the error, console.error, error, generating speech, and return new response, failed to generate speech, with a status of 500. And that's it for our route handler. It takes text, generates speech, and returns that audio data. Now for the UI, we'll build it in two stages. First, we'll create a basic version that plays the audio once. Then we will improve it with replay functionality. In the UI folder, create a new folder called generate speech, and inside, create a page.tsx file. Start with the component structure. Very similar layout pattern to our previous pages. We start with use client directive since this is a client component. The component name is generate speech page. We have a div container. The audio UI will appear at the top and then the form is fixed at the bottom. Now let's set up the state we need. First import use state from react and within the component, we're going to define three state variables text and set text with initial value empty string and this is for the input. Next, ease loading and set ease loading, initial value false. This is for our loading state. Finally, error, set error and the initial value is null. The type is string or null. This is for our error messages. Now that we have the state, let's add the text input inside the form. So HTML input, I'm going to copy paste tailwind classes to make this look pretty. The placeholder is going to be enter text to convert to speech. Type is equal to text. Value is equal to the state variable text. On change, we get hold of the event and call set text passing in event.target.value. And we disable it when ease loading is true. So a standard controlled input that updates our text state. We disable it while loading. Next, 
add the generate button next to the input. So button, the text is generate, type is equal to submit, disabled is equal to if esloading is true or if there's no text in the input field. I will also paste Tailwind classes to make this look pretty. Now that we have the form, let's implement the form submission. The function is handle submit, so const handle submit. And this is an async function that takes an event of type react.form event HTML form element. In the function body, we prevent default submission, so event dot prevent default set loading state so set is loading to true clear any previously set errors so set error to null and clear the input as well so set text empty string after clearing the input let's make our api call try block const response is equal to await fetch the url is slash api slash generate speech which is the endpoint we've just created and for options, method set to post, headers, content type, application, JSON, and body, JSON.stringify, we pass in an object with key and value set to text. If the response is not okay, we throw a new error, failed to generate audio. And we will handle the error. So catch error block console dot error generating audio followed by the error and then we call set error if error instance of error we set error dot message otherwise something went wrong please try again and this is an uppercase e and now for the important part let's handle the audio response so inside the try block after checking the response is okay we get the audio data as a blob the const blob is equal to await response dot blob. Then we create a URL for it. So const audio URL is equal to URL dot create object URL passing in the blob. And then we create an audio element. So const audio is equal to new audio passing in audio URL. Once we have the audio, we play it immediately. So audio dot play. Finally, we clean up the URL when the audio finishes playing. So audio dot add event listener. The event is ended and we execute a function where we call URL dot revoke object URL audio URL. Very important to avoid memory leaks. Next, connect the submit handler to the form. So on submit is equal to handle submit. Next, Add loading and error states above the form. If there is an error, render a div tag with that error. And if is loading is true, render a div tag that says generating audio. Perfect, our component is now ready. Time to test it out. In the browser, navigate to slash UI slash generate speech. And you should see the form, enter text to convert to speech and the generate button. Type some text like, hello, this is a test of AI speech generation and press generate. Looks like something's wrong. So let's go back to our code. And the problem is I've misspelled our API endpoint. This should be generate speech. And I also noticed the loading flag was never reset. Let's add a finally block set is loading to false. All right, let's go back to the browser, refresh, enter the text, hello, this is a test of speech generation. Press enter, and our AI will convert the text to speech. Hello, this is a test of speech generation. You can see that the audio will play once, and then the memory is released when it's done. We have completed the first version of our component. We're able to convert text to speech. Now, let's improve it to allow replaying audio. This requires more careful resource management since we need to keep the audio around. First, we need to import use ref and use effect from React. Add refs to store our audio resources and a state for tracking if we have audio. So state 
has audio, set has audio, and initially the value is false. Then for the refs, const audio URL ref is equal to use ref, the type is string or null, and the initial value is null. And then const audio ref, use ref, the initial value is null, and this is of type HTML audio element or null. Next, we need to update our handle submit function to properly manage these resources. So before we call our API, if audio URL ref dot current exists, URL dot revoke object URL, audio URL ref dot current. And then audio URL ref dot current is equal to null. Along similar lines, if audio ref dot current exists, audio ref dot current dot pause, audio ref dot current dot source is equal to an empty string, and audio ref dot current is equal to null. So if an audio is currently being played, when you enter a new prompt, we pause that audio, clear it, and we get ready with a new fetch request. And here in our try block, blob is equal to await response.blob. Instead of audio URL, this is going to be audio URL ref dot current is equal to URL dot create object URL. And then instead of const audio, audio ref dot current is equal to new audio. And we pass in audio URL ref dot current. Audio dot play becomes audio ref dot current dot play. We'll also set has audio to true and in the catch block, we'll set it to false. We will comment out the ended event listener because we're not cleaning up immediately anymore. The audio stays available for replay. Now add the replay functionality. So const replay audio is equal to a function. If audio ref dot current exists, audio ref dot current dot current time is equal to zero and audio ref dot current dot play. This resets the audio to the beginning and plays it again. Add a replay button to the UI. So above the form, we make use of the has audio state variable. And if you are currently not loading, so if is not loading, we render a button. Text is replay audio. On click, we call replay audio, which is the function we just defined. And I'm going to paste the Tailwind classes. The button only appears when we have audio and we are not loading. Finally, and this is crucial, we need to clean up when the component unmounts. So use effect, we pass in a function and we return the cleanup function. Here, if audio URL ref dot current exists, URL dot revoke object URL, audio URL ref dot current, and then if audio ref dot current exists, audio ref dot current dot pause and audio ref dot current dot source is equal to an empty string. We specify empty dependency array as we want this to run only when the component unmounts. Now let me explain why this cleanup is so important. When we create an object URL with URL dot create object URL, the browser allocates memory for that blob. If we don't call revoke object URL, that memory stays allocated even after we are done with the audio. Similarly, audio elements can keep playing even after the component unmounts if we don't explicitly pause them. That is why we clean up old audio before creating new video, clean up everything when the component unmounts, and properly pause and clear audio sources. This might seem like overkill for a simple demo, but in a real app with many users generating audio, proper cleanup prevents memory leaks and performance issues. All right, let's test this complete implementation. Back in the browser, type some text. Hey, how are you? Press generate and listen. Hey, how are you? The AI converts your text to natural sounding speech and plays it automatically. But after generation, you'll see this replay audio button. Click it. Hey, how are you? 
to hear the speech again without AI regenerating. And while we're using the default voice here, OpenAI's text-to-speech model actually supports multiple voices. You can refer to the docs for more information. And as opposed to this simple UI, in your own app, you could also add features like a download button to save the audio file, speed controls to make speech faster or slower, a voice selection dropdown, and any other feature as per your requirements. All right, let's recap what we've built. We created a route handler that accepts text and uses OpenAI's text-to-speech model to generate speech. The audio data is returned as a binary response with the appropriate content type. For the UI, we built it in two stages. First, a basic version that plays audio once with automatic cleanup. Then an enhanced version with replay functionality. We learned about proper audio resource management using refs for audio elements, cleaning up object URLs, and ensuring resources are released when components unmount. The combination of speech to text and text to speech opens up possibilities for voice-driven interfaces. You could build apps where users speak commands, the AI processes them as text, then responds with synthesized speech, which is a complete voice interaction loop. What used to require complex audio processing libraries is now just a few function calls away with the AI SDK. All right, that wraps up our first half of the course on the fundamentals of building AI applications with Next.js and the AI SDK. In the next half, we'll dive into some of the more advanced topics.